What's up guys, it's Zev from TechSource and welcome to my 2018 desk setup tour. This video is sponsored by Guns of Boom, a real big shooter that's finally on mobile. It's got awesome graphics, it's easy to play with so many different maps, weapons, customization, and game modes to choose from. My absolutely favorite gun in the game is the Cerebrus by far. It's a burst shotgun that obliterates anyone that comes close to me, but I do enjoy the sniper once in a while because I can pick off enemies from a distance. For a limited time, they've added a new event featuring the real Danny Trejo, the man himself featured in a tournament that will last until June 14th. And during this time, you get access to the new free-for-all game mode and a bunch of other cool stuff like maps, guns, and costumes. They have over 40 million players that join the game just within a year, and the best part is that it's free to download for both Android and iOS. But just for my subscribers, they're actually given a huge starter pack that includes some awesome gear, like a machine gun and some gold to kickstart your game. All you guys have to do is click on the link in the description section and download the game. So this is pretty much where everything happens guys. This is where I run the channel, this is where I watch videos, play games, I also edit videos here, and of course the occasional fap session. What are you doing? Shaking my bottle. It's vitamin C, you gotta have your vitamins. So before you guys start watching this video, I do recommend watching the upgrade video, which I uploaded a few weeks ago. You guys can click on the top right card or the link down below. It's a, it's a very beautiful montage video I did of upgrading my entire setup. So definitely watch that before you continue watching this one. So I guess I'll start off by talking about the desk, which is the centerpiece of pretty much every setup. Uh, this is actually custom made by Level Gaming. This is the Gamma series. They do have a black top with the red outline as well as a black and blue. So this was actually custom made uh, for me specifically and is also a custom width. I think this one is about 80 inches in width. So it's pretty wide. And of course it is adjustable because I don't like sitting all the time. So I do like the flexibility of standing up sometimes. The only downside on this one compared to my previous sit and stand is that there is no memory built in. So I can't pre-configure settings for a specific height. So you're gonna have to do it manually, unfortunately. But the upside is that it's more quiet than my previous sit and stand desk. I don't know if you guys can hear this, but it's fairly quiet compared to most sit and stand desks, I would say. The next important piece of any setup is of course the PC itself. That is what powers the setup essentially. Uh, this here is Big Red. I have an entire series on it. If you guys wanna check it out, I've been through so much building this damn thing, but in the end, it came out to be worth it. It's rocking a 7980XC 18 core processor, which is delated and overclocked to 4.9 gigahertz, I believe. It's rocking 32 gigs of RAM, two GTX 1080 Ti's from EVGA, and I crammed it inside this tiny micro ATX case from Hex Gear. This is the R40 chassis. There's been a lot of mods done to this case. Uh, first of all, it's water-cooled, of course. All the parts are from EK. There's been a lot of custom paint jobs and some slight modding to make some parts fit. If you guys wanna check out benchmarks and gameplay and stuff like that, I'll leave a link to the video down below. But moving on to the next important piece of the setup, which is this bad boy, my sexy ultra wide monitor. So this is LG's new 38WK95C. It's basically the upgrade version of their 38UC99 that I was using for the past year or so. It's got a 3840 by 1600 IPS display. It's got HDR10, sRGB over 99% with built-in FreeSync. In fact, the only difference between this one and the previous model is that it comes with HDR10. It's got slightly thinner bezels and a new base design with upgraded speakers. So if you guys wanna learn more about it, you can check out my previous video on the 38UC99. It's pretty much the same thing with different features. I'll drop a link to that down below as well. HDR is really nice if you're actually watching HDR content. 
The technology essentially creates deeper levels of contrast, making the bright parts of an image even brighter and the dark parts even darker. I would say there's a good amount of HDR content out there. However, if you're not consuming HDR content, I would definitely recommend turning it off in the display settings. Otherwise, your image would have a weird tint to it and it would look washed out. All right, so let's take a look at the audio equipment in my setup. Um, the only source of audio I have are the headphones, the speakers, and I do have a microphone, which I will get to. Uh, so you guys have already seen these many times. These are the Edifier Luna Eclipse E25HD. Edifier actually makes two versions of these, the HD and the non-HD. Uh, the analog and the digital. I'm actually using the digital ones, which sound incredible. They have a really nice design, kind of like an alien-like design, which is why I still kept it. And I've been using it for, I think, at least two years now. Phenomenal audio, absolutely love them. So the headphones I'm using are the Sennheiser HD 800s, which are sitting on top of Drogon. And this is my prop slash headphone hanger that I'm using. Um, so these are actually custom painted. And I use these pretty much for everything. Uh, watching videos, playing games. Most importantly, I use them to edit my videos. These headphones have a wide sound stage and pretty much picks up every possible sound, which is why it's so perfect for editing videos or monitoring audio or any audio sensitive work, really. And I think that Sennheiser actually came up with new headphones for their HD lineup, which I might have to check out. But yeah, very a pair of very solid headphones that I use for pretty much everything. Sometimes if I really want to blast the music and amp it up, that's when I switch over to my speakers. Uh, all right, so moving on to the microphone. A lot of you guys had questions about this in the comment section. Some of you even said, doesn't the audio come out upside down? I don't, I don't know if he was trolling or not, but I, I seriously hope you were trolling because no, the sound does not become upside down. So the reason why I came up with that placement is because I didn't want to use a tripod and put it on the desk and I didn't want to hook it up to a boom arm and uh, attach it to the desk as well. I wanted a clean kind of floating design or, or floating look to it, which is why I hooked it up to a, a Gorilla Pod and attached it to the back. So one of the negative things about doing this setup is because the microphone is behind the keyboard, it's actually gonna pick up me typing on the keyboard at the same time. So while I'm basically typing and talking, it's gonna be picking up the keyboard in the background, which is a negative. So. Uh, I don't actually mind because when I am talking to the microphone, I'm usually on Skype or I'm on Hangouts talking to my friends or meeting, so I'm not really typing. And if I am typing, I would usually just mute the microphone. So here's what it sounds like typing while talking into the microphone. While I'm basically typing and talking, it's gonna be picking up the keyboard in the background. So yeah guys, I don't recommend this setup for the typical gamer because while you're gaming and you're typing on your keyboard, especially if it's a mechanical keyboard, it's gonna annoy the crap out of your friends and whoever you're playing with. Uh, this type of setup works for me because of what I use it for and how I use it, but for the average gamer, this is not the ideal setup. Rather get a boom arm, put it closer to your mouth, or just use your headset microphone. So the peripherals I'm using, most of it actually is upgraded. The only thing that I kept the same was the mouse. This is the Logitech G900. It's the wireless gaming mouse. It's, I absolutely love it. It's, I've been using it for, I think, almost two years now. Uh, it's very responsive, it's comfortable, and the battery life on there is pretty decent. That's why I decided to keep it. Now, the keyboard is one of my favorite upgrades. This is actually not available in the US. I had to contact Corsair and have them send me a unit. This is the K70 RGB SE Rapid Fire and it's using Cherry MX switches. One of the things I love about this keyboard is the silver aluminum backplate, which really gives off a nice pop to the RGB colors as opposed to the black color from the regular K70. The only downside is it doesn't have a wrist rest, which you know, I'm starting to get used to, but overall, the, just the design of it with the white keycaps, it's beautiful and I absolutely love the keyboard. Another thing I replaced was the extended mouse pad. My last one was very filthy and also I was getting tired of the design. It was too busy, there's a lot going on and I replaced it with the Red Dragon, which really looks nice. Um, it's, it's, it's very simple and it's got that nice red outline stitching, which contributes to the overall color scheme. Of course, I had to drill a hole in it and a hole in the desk itself to route the keyboard wire. And speaking of mouse pads, there's this awesome company out there that just started out and they're making some dope mouse pads like these. So they sent over a few samples. I think they have like three or four different designs with three different uh, sizes. And if you guys want to check them out, I'll drop a link below. You guys can actually get 10% off them using the code TechSource. 
So there are two reasons why I mounted the speakers this way on the lack shelves. Reason number one, it looks a lot cleaner having it lifted from the desk. And also two, it's uh, gonna be at my ear level. So the audio is being directed straight into both of my ears, which honestly really makes a big difference. All right, so cable management was a challenge for this setup. There were so many cables to work with. I have so many devices uh, that I hooked up. Uh, and the idea was to basically keep everything off the ground. So I used a bunch of 3M tape, a bunch of Velcro straps. Uh, I even used a lot of cable clips to route the cables. But the MVP here is of course this massive J channel raceway that I picked up, which I think is about 50 inches or so. Most of the cables are being routed uh, inside that and everything else is hooked up on the desk using 3M tape. For example, the power strip, uh, these power bricks for the monitor, and a bunch of other things, of course. Now, the tricky thing about this is because the desk is motorized, I need to have some cable slack for a few of the cables. Uh, first of all, I do need cable slack for the power strip and cable slack for the ethernet cable, which is being uh, routed from the bottom of the carpet. So for example, if I'm gonna be raising the desk, I do need cable slack from both the ethernet cable and the power strip. So that way both of the cables will expand with the height of the desk. A few other things I hooked up underneath the desk just to make my life a lot easier is an SD card reader, which is then hooked up to the back of my PC because my PC case does not have any USB ports in the front. So it's gonna be really difficult to reach in the back every single time. So that is why I added an SD card from Kingston. I also hooked up my audio interface. This is the Behringer Euphoria UM2 and my Sennheiser HD800s are hooked up to this. And finally, an eight terabyte external hard drive from Seagate with actually two built-in USB ports. So if I ever need to transfer data, all I have to do is hook it up to my Seagate drive, which is really cool because I don't need an extra USB hub for that. It's kind of like a two-in-one. So there were mixed feelings when it came to swapping out the chair. A lot of you guys were against it and others had questions why. The main reason is comfort. So this is the Vertigear Gaming Series Trigger 350 ergonomic chair. It's basically if Herman Miller made love to a gaming chair, this is what the outcome would be. I know that the red color is not matching the rest of the setup and it's throwing everything off and affecting OCDs across the world. I know it's affecting my OCD, but uh, the main reason I swapped it, like I said, it's comfort. It's got so many points of adjustment and in the end, I'm gonna sit in a chair that I'm comfortable in, not because it looks awesome or it looks cool. Um, one of the things I don't like about the chair is the headrest. I don't know, I think it's damaged actually because in reality, I wanna bring it all the way up here and closer to my head so I can lay back. But as soon as I do that, it goes down. So I just think that maybe it's broken or defective because it's not supposed to do that. Um, otherwise, yeah, this would be like the perfect chair for me. I'm gonna have to contact Vertgear about that and see if they can send me another one because it's not, it's not supposed to do that. It's, I think it's broken, but anyways, yeah, that's why I swapped the chair. So this was something I added after the video was completed. I, I needed a phone stand for my iPhone 10 just so I can prop it up and see notifications as they appear. Eventually what I'm gonna do is I'll hook up uh, my lightning cable through here and drill a hole behind it so that way I can charge my phone at the same time, but that's gonna be at a later time. Of course, no setup is complete without any lights, so I picked up an RGB strip from Lifex and I hooked it up to my smartphone and I can essentially change the colors um, and the intensity straight through my smartphone, which is really cool. I like to keep it on red, obviously, to keep the color scheme consistent, but if I'm uh, writing a script or trying to focus in a productive mode, I like to change the colors to uh, like purple or light green, turquoise, just calming, soothing colors like that to kind of just get in the mood of writing scripts because I hate writing scripts for my videos. Uh, a few other things come on this way. Drogon's little brother, I hooked him up in the front here. I, oh shit, sorry Drogon. He's just kind of chilling here in front of the case. I don't know what his purpose is. Behind my case, I attached a headphone hanger and my uh, Hesh 3 wireless headphones are pretty much hanging from here. The reason why I hooked it up on this side is so it's not visible. And then if I'm on the move, I can just grab it and then leave. These are pretty much the only Bluetooth headphones that I use currently. And I hook this up to my smartphone when I'm playing Mobile Legends. It does have a mic built in. So we get on Discord and we talk and we play. So yeah, solid pair of headphones. I think I did a video on these over a year ago and since then I've been using them. But yeah, that's what the, that's the purpose of those. 
And last but not least, I added the mural painting on the wall. Um, I wanted something that obviously contributed to the color scheme, but also nothing too specific. I didn't want like superhero characters, for example, like Deadpool. I wanted something like abstract. So I looked up some abstract painting and this caught my eye. It just looks really cool. And I think really just is the icing on the cake. But let me know what you guys think. Uh, but pretty much wraps up my setup tour 2018. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know in the comment section what you guys think of my setup. And um, let me know if there's anything you guys would like to see me change or some things you don't agree with. Let me know everything in the comment section down below. Also, don't forget to rate it out of 10. One being a potato setup, 10 being a an awesome setup, I guess. I don't know. Anyways, I love you guys. Thank you so much. Anything mentioned in this video will be linked below. I will see you in the next video. Peace.